So after working with Tkinter and doing some data analysis stuff, I wanted to get into Kivi, which is a module for application development, so that I could do something maybe a little basic, but linked to a database with a voting system, maybe with a, a, um, a user uh, system to personalize everything, create accounts and stuff like that, something very basic though. And so this is going to be my first um, understanding video about Kivi. So what is Kivi going to be? Well, if you've worked on Tkinter, you know that a um, an app like this is going to work on a loop, right? You're going to initiate your app and then go through reading your uh, script all over again all the time in this loop that is usually going to be clocked, okay? So if this loop is uh, a sixtieth of a second, then it means that your f uh, screen is going to refresh well at 60 FPS. Okay, so if anything happens in anywhere in there, like every 60th of a second, you're going to update your screen with that new information. It can be a click here, it can be an input there, it can be, um, I don't know, just anything, anything happening uh, or uh, an event that you programmed, anything like this loop is going to happen constantly and you're going to update it accordingly all the time. Um, as for how Kiwi is working, it's going to be a, a system that is um, linking all the, the places that you could be working with. So uh, obviously when you're developing something it, it has to support maybe iOS, maybe Android, maybe um, Windows or uh, any other stuff. Uh, but here most of the job is already done and what you're going to have to do is just a very few things to adapt it to every platform that you're going to uh, want your app to be available on, uh, making this very practical. Kiwi is going to work as a uh, class, so an oriented, uh, object oriented uh, system, meaning that you're going to have an app which is a screen and in that app you're going to place widgets and those widgets are going to be anything, any kind of class of any kind of object being a layout which is an object, you can have your app and inside the layout which is going to be, I don't know, like a grid layout for example, uh, you can have another widget that is going to be an image, another widget that is going to be a text, so a label, another widget that is going to be a button and another widget that is going to be a place to write in, right, a, an input box. So widgets are going to be instances of things that already exist in Kivi, but that you're going to adapt to your needs and place on your app in various ways. So how is this going to work? Well, let's follow the documentation and create something very easy, just like they're telling us to. And so we're going to start by importing from kivi.app app. So the app object gets everything that creates your main loop, that makes your, your uh, frame work, okay, your overall app. And then we're going to import, so from kivi.uix, which is the file where everything's stored, all those um, statements that they're going to use, and we're going to import a label okay see how this is always going on like they, they named it with uh, no capital letters in the files and capital letters for the uh, methods and objects and then we're gonna go and create our first main loop our first app so what we're gonna do is create a class hello app and it's gonna be an object which is going to have app as its parent, so it's going to take every ability, everything that makes app, it's going to instantiate it with the init method of app, and then you're going to add things to it. And what we're going to add is a build function, we're just taking self, and it's going to take self.window And it's going to be a label 
saying hell sorry text equal <laughs> hello there and we're going to return this directly <clears throat> so what are we doing here well we're creating an object an app which is going to return uh, something called label so let me maybe do it this way so it's maybe more clear so we're going to create self dot window which is going to be a label hello there and then we're gonna just return it okay so our window is just gonna be made of this label so we're gonna create our if name equal equals main and then here we're going to call our app which is going to be an instance of hello app and then this instance is going to run so what does that mean well run is available because you are using an instance of an app object and this app object has in those files a run uh, function and this function is going to call your build uh, function so you're gonna always have to use that build function here and you can search for it and start your app and so now if I do this you get a hello there what's nice with Kiwi is that you can see that this one widget this one label is going to take your whole screen whatever you do the only thing not resizing here is the hello there because we didn't tell the app it should resize itself but aside from that it's going to be adapting to anything obviously we have no grid or no organization we just have the one widget so it's inherently going to take the whole space of your screen meaning that you could do basically anything with it so this is how it's going to do this is your main loop if you will but what if we want now to go a little deeper and create a very simple screen just like the documentation is telling us well let's go and make this and what we're gonna do is call something new and we're going to call from kv.uix.grid layout my bad I'm doing it again grid uh, layout and we're gonna import grid layout so a grid layout is just going to be what we said earlier like it's an object a widget that is gonna be holding other widgets in a, in different ways so the grid is the first one they're showcasing it's not the most convenient I feel like but it's very nice to understand it so let's create a class which is going to be uh, my let's say logging screen just the way they're doing it and it's going to be an instance of a grid layout okay and what you're gonna do here is that you're gonna override the grid layout in its method. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing it because we want to place things in the grid. If you don't override the init method, you're not going to generate it with the widgets, you're just going to generate the blank basic object. So you want to be able to add any kind, any number of widgets into it. So you're calling a new init method doing self and star star quags meaning star star meaning for python that you can call any t any number of keyword arguments quags keyword arguments and then you add this quag statement here just for people for readability to make it more practical okay so this is basically what that means so now you're able to add anything to this instance of a grid layout that is your logging screen but because you're doing this you might override important things that make your grid layout behave the way it has to and so in order to keep those abilities you're gonna have to call something that's called super and super is going to um, tell the app that the parent so the parent of your class here grid layout is going to be uh, affecting it present in your init method and so what you're, go you're going to say here is this dot underscore underscore init and then still quags so what's happening here you're saying my logging screen class for every instance of it is going to call everything from the init method okay of my grid layout 
So that's what super says. Super is like the super of this instance of login screen is grid layout. So you're going to keep everything from it. Meaning that now you're going to instantiate a real grid layout with everything in it and you're able to add any kind of information you might want to add. And so let's go with this and do our thing here. Well, we're going to do is add a self dot add widgets and this is going to take our label which is going to say hello there okay so now we are instantiating this label up there and so we don't need it here anymore and we just can return our logging screen. So we're going to call the logging screen here and make our widget. But before that, remember that I'm on the grid layout and so any grid layout is going to take an argument self that calls, which is the amount of columns you're going to need. And if we put just a one, and we run this we're gonna have the exact same thing as before a hello there message in the middle of the screen and the widget that we added is gonna take the whole space available okay so this is what's happening in here um, with this one column having a label obviously if I copy this and add it again and do this for example and I run it I still have one column so my two widgets are gonna take equal space at two different level and they are going to size themselves up depending on what I'm doing on my screen okay note that they are going the same in the same order that they were written in my code hello there and then what's up if I uh, switch them up they're gonna be switched from top to bottom if I change those columns to two then I get those two widgets adjusted within two columns next to each other same thing now that we get that we're gonna keep on following the uh, QV documentation and add a text input. So same thing as the usual, so from text input import text input. And now what we're gonna do is replace this with like a, a name label and a email label, for example. And now we're going to add after each of those label a, a, a zone to input text, an input box, if you will. And so this is going to be done within two steps because, well, obviously here our label is just a fixed text, but you could make this an object by calling it self.username and then uh, calling it a label and then inserting it in this widget, meaning that you could be updating the this label object at any point by calling the name of the object so we're going to do that with our uh, text input which is going to be username here and we're going to make it a text input and um, one special call here is going is called multi-line equal false uh, just because we want to say you cannot have multiple lines inserted in this uh, text input box okay that, that's just what it means nothing more crazy than that and then we're gonna add the widget of self.username okay and let's copy and paste this in here but instead instead of self.username it's gonna be user email And we're gonna try this out and boom we have what the documentation said so the widgets going in order within two columns name 
text input, email text input. So you can write down anything you want here. Why not? What's up? Stuff and things. And then enter, and you don't go to the line because you said multi line equal false. But you can then go into uh, my uh, email doc um, xxx at gmail.com. Okay. <laughs> this is how it goes. What happens if I go with a column one? Then boom, everything's going from top to bottom. Way less efficient, but why not? And now let's go and finish this with a button. So from kv.uix.button, you know the drill. I want to go too fast here. And we're going to add la at last self.add widget button uh, text equal send. And boom, you have a button. You can click on it even if it doesn't do anything yet. Right? Note that here, what if I go into two columns now? My button is going to be on the left here, so there's nothing. So there are multiple ways of handling this, and we might go into that later on. Uh, but at least you can see that here, all those things are working just like we've seen before. Uh, but this is just the first step of a lot of steps that I hope I'll be covering with you as I am learning. So yeah, I'm going to leave you here. Cheers.